Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. This week in the workshop, we've got a shell of a concept from viewer Tim Crivis Olson, who writes, I have a bit of a different tune-up for you. I've had a monocolor Morophon Storm shell for a while, but have tried to determine which tribe or color best fit for either, letting me get more creatures to cast or more toolbox for my combo cards. I want to include cost reducers and creatures with these conditions. Mana producers must either generate only colorless or our main color, and every spell must be using the same main color. Crivis, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. When you first submitted this list, we were really starved for options around creature-based storm, but Modern Horizons 2 saved us. If you're wondering what I'd recommend here, it's green hands down. We have both Thrasta and Ave Progenitor Ooze that can create this concept for you without needing Morophon. Now, with that being said, naturally you could swap Ave and Morophon if you wanted to stick to your main concept, but I think Ooze Tribal Storm sounds like a badass concept. Let's start with Ave. This 5 mana 2 2 Ooze has, surprise, Storm. That means that when we cast them from anywhere, we make a token copy that isn't legendary for each spell cast before it this turn, ours or our opponent. Then, each copy of Ave enters with a counter on it for each ooze you control, meaning your token copies are like slimy little nesting dolls, each one getting bigger than the last. Important to note here, token doublers don't work with Ave. Parallel Lives or Doubling Season won't make more Aves since the tokens are created on the stack and not in play. So in addition to this little challenge, Tim gave me a list of artifact-based cost reducers he'd like included, ranging from Ursus Incubator to Emerald Medallion to Semblance Anvil. These are going to help us cast your slimy little friends and give us a decent storm count. However, there are two important aspects to any Storm deck we need to craft before we squish as many oozes in here as possible. The first is card draw. We're going to need to be able to chain card draw from casting spells in order to continually refill our hands. We cannot use something like Beast Whisperer since it's not an ooze though, and Tim wants this to be tribal. We can use Guardian Project, The Great Henge, and Glimpse of Nature. These cards are all going to get us lots of card advantage on each creature spell cast, in addition to some enchantments or spell-based draw. We can supplement these with Sylvan Library, Garruk's Uprising, or Greater Good in order to draw more cards more reliably. Great ways to make sure we have a full hand and a full board. Now the second thing we need to worry about is mana production. You can't cast multiple spells if you don't have the mana to cast multiple spells, so ramp is important along with cost reducers as discussed. Specifically, ramp that gets us untapped lands is what we're aiming for, since that'll allow us to cast more spells afterwards. Three visits, Sky Shroud Claim and Harrow all get us untapped lands that allow us to cast spells afterwards, adding to our storm count. Importantly, we cannot use mana dorks in this deck as they aren't oozes. So, no Birds of Paradise, Llanowar Elves, or Incubation Druid. We need land ramp and artifact mana to get us down that storm line. Classic mana rocks will be important here. Soul Ring, Chrome Mox, Arcane Signet, and a real standout here that's a little off the wall. It's an often forgotten rock that acts as a storm enabler, Entangle Root. This 3 mana mana generator acts like a burgy god of storytelling, but only for creature spells and for each player. Providing a retroactive discount on your creature spells, this is a shoe in for inclusion in this list in particular. More importantly, combined with Cloudstone Curio, if you have oozes that are reduced to just a single green mana in casting cost, this can get you an infinite storm count. That's as many aves as you want, enveloping the board in gooey goodness. The right lands are going to be crucial too. Castle Garen Brig and Nykthos Shrine to Nyx can both create plenty of mana towards our storm count with very little effort. Otherwise, we'll just need basic forest for mana. That is the beauty of a monocolored deck. So with mana generation, mana cost reducers, and card draw out of the way, let's get into the slippery bits and fill our list with all these slimy bodies. Here we can get some classic creatures, though not all of them storm specific. 
we get Experiment 1, Acidic Slime, and Scavenging Ooze, to name just a few. These are all classic creatures with fantastic utility in the format, be it growing reliably, destroying pesky permanents, or acting as graveyard hate. Utility is not something that this deck will lack. But, all in all, there are only 20 black-bordered oozes in all of Magic in this color, and that includes Ave. That's upsetting, since even if we include all of them, we'd really like some roll fillers in the deck. And it may be cheating, but I think we can find them with shapeshifters. Any shapeshifter that comes in as an ooze, like Metallic Mimic, or has Changeling, like a Realm Walker, is going to fit into our needs. Technically, these are oozes. Well, technically, they're giant imps and Uncle Istvans, but they are oozes in there somewhere. Masked Vandal can be our Reclamation Sage stand-in, in addition to Acidic Slime, and Chameleon Colossus can be a powerful beater all on its own. Even Guardian Gladewalker can help make our armies bigger, especially if we include them in our infinite combo with Bounce Shenanigans and Cloudstone Curio. Before we take a look at the list that I've put together, I wanted to bring up one very big, very important potential upgrade for inclusion. Food Chain. I mentioned this in my Thrasta video, but Ave does go infinite all on their own with Food Chain. How? Well, you see, the tokens Ave makes are token copies of Ave itself, all the way down to the mana value. So you can exile Ave and a token copy of Ave to make enough mana to recast your commander, making more copies that you can continue to exile, making more copies down the line. That's a lot of Aves. However, this is a one and a half card infinite combo, and a lot of playgroups don't like that kind of thing. If that's something your playgroup is okay with, I'd recommend you also include a Mast Haste Enabler in the list. Uh, Concordant Crossroads, for instance, is another expensive card, but it helps you achieve that all-in win. And if this is what you're going for, or what you want to go for, it's at least worth considering. So here's our list. It's an ooze tribal list featuring lots of ways to make our spells cheaper, our oozes bigger, and make some smashy, splashy, slippy, slimy friends. There is a small plus one plus one counter theme in the deck, so I've included some of the smaller enchantments that double counters, so you can have a backup plan to storming off. Let me know how this works for you, Tim, and let us know what your list ends up looking like. And for everyone else, let me know in the comments what you would add to this list. I love to hear from each and every one of you. Until next time, folks, good luck and have fun. A big thanks to all of our patrons, without whom I wouldn't be able to keep doing this. A special shout out to our Lodestone Golems, Ben Frain, Sterling Langford, Will Briggs, Ben Davis, David Norrie, Corey Whitaker, Snipes, and Cameron Scott, and our Metalwork Colossi, Austin Charlotte, Charles Olson, Matthew Chandler, Pulsating Kiwi, Jim, Raphael Lum, Wyatt M, Timothy Conan, Matt Oakes, Stephen Dunn, and Jeremiah Lewis. Thank you, everyone.